Welcome to Reading Room Marvel Comics. Today we are in Tales of Fence number 40, second Iron Man comic. So let's get into this. Featuring America's newest superhero sensation, Iron Man. His size alone does not worry me. But there, there is something else, some sinister secret behind this coming. Gargantus. 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 Iron Man vs. Gargantus. History has recorded many a bitter duel to the death, but never before has the future of all mankind depended on the grim outcome of the one encounter, as in the fantastic showdown between two mighty phenomena of past and present, Iron Man and Gargantus. This is a Stan Lee, but this time we got art by uh, Jack Kirby rather than Don Heck, who we'll see doing the inking again. I forget, I think he did the last issue. I'm not sure I forget. There's awesome guy of artists, which confused me. But it looks like, yeah, Jack Kirby's doing art for this now. Let's see. Anthony Stark is a man who leads three lives. He is recognized throughout the world as a mechanical genius at a scientific conference in, you know, in Geneva. Mr. Stark, in the name of our International Society of Physicists, I award you our annual Medal of Honor for your outstanding contribution to microtransistor research. Thank you, Professor. You're the scientist Anthony Stark, the Galactic America's Cold War struggle against the communist menace at the U.S. Army proving ground, pr prove the, pr proving grounds. You mean these roller skates will enable an entire infantry division to race down a highway at 60 miles an hour? Precisely, General. Skates can easily be carried in pack and are collapsible. They, they can be clamped on the sole of a boot. Is that I'm talking because he's. Who's talking here? Shouldn't it have been him? The, the, the word bubble. I feel like it should be Tony saying it, but it's going to this guy. But it look, looks like it. Okay. Because it's this guy. It's, they can be clamped on the sole of a boot with an ordinary skate key. But where these skates differ from toys lies in the fact that they have tiny transmitter powered engines to drive the skate wheels. That was supposed to be him, but it's the, someone else talking. That's a mistake. Minutes later, the GIs demonstrate. Incredible. The tree can now transport itself onto highways without trucks. This will realize troop movements. You're a military genius, Stark. A genius. No, General. Just a scientist who realized that the boundaries of science are infinite. Nobody in the world expects how it was how, how it helped how it has helped me. I'd be dead now for my scientific knowledge. The second Anthony Stark is a sophisticated millionaire playboy whom beautiful women adore. I'm mad about you, Tony, but why don't you come to Monte Carlo more often so I can see more of you. Uh, business reasons, my sweet. I've got investments all over the world that, that me look right after. I know you, Tony Stark. Your investments probably were all worth skirts and you and, uh, and, <coughs> and are dying to marry you. Your name has been linked with every actress in society beauty from Taiwan to Rome. Tony! Jean! I've been looking for you. Where's going swimming? I'm gonna like swim? That should be great fun. Let's go, Tony. Er, uh, count me out, Jean. I've had a hard day and a uh, suddenly tiredness just came over me. So you run along about me. I'm going back to the hotel. Hey, Jean, you're losing your hold on Tony. What girl does it? Sooner or later, Tony probably has a midnight date with some other gal. Darn her lucky hide. But Lil doesn't Jean or any other person know that Tony Stark has left the gay. <laughs> Sorry. Gay men happy back in the day, so I'm not going to laugh about it. But it is still funny. Gay party for a most unusual date with an electrical electric cord. Now, fun fact, I just remember something. There was no Marvel comic. This is what the time they weren't Marvel. They were known as either Timely or Atlas. I always forget. I confused which one it was. They had a comic called Gay Comics. Look it up. <laughs> Pretty funny. Alright. Poor Jean. She probably thought I was trying to avoid her, but I couldn't go swimming. I can never appear anywhere with bare chest because I constantly wear this iron chest plate. <sighs> just another man plugging their electric shavers in the morning. Or evening shave, I must constantly charge up this plate, which gives continued life to my heart. My ticker would stop being if a plate were removed or didn't receive its regular booster shot. Ah, electrical energy is pouring back. Men continue living their help from humanity's Iron Man. Iron Man? Yes! This is Anthony Stark's third and most important identity. A creature in the unbelievable powerful iron shell, equipped with many ingenious attachments for her, before which his enemies cower, whether they be gangsters. Apparently, fun crime in between those two issues. This happens a lot in the Marvel comics, unfortunately, the early ones. So, 
those just get better stuff, which is kind of unfortunate, but you know, you can't, you know, you can, you can't be too greedy. Fool, you know, small arms fire cannot penetrate my iron body. He's right, we can hurt Iron Man. Or, if Iron Man antagonist is some madman of a science who seeks to rule mankind. Yes! Make sure great isn't working! No, Doctor, I'm jamming the this electrical, electronic firing mechanism of electronic interference. Now, before I turn you over to the police, I'll make sure the lab never spawns another instrument of destruction. And so it is, Anthony Stark leads a triple life in the shadows of death one night as Stark takes a date at to a circus. Run for your lives, the cats have broken loose. This is a situation Iron Man had better handle for someone to hurt. But I must slip away to switch my metallic identity. Quick, Mary, in this way. Months later, Tony, where are you going? Is he actually a free to a phone booth to call the police, Riot Squad? You keep heading, heading for the street with the rest of the crowd. Then I start to find a deserted in the corner under the understand. I know why not even the sharpest cost custom mobsters knows that in my I don't know what that word is. Case, briefcase, okay, is a secret x ray proof compartment. Seeing all the parts of my Iron Man uniform in a collapsible form. Oh, so you know all. You, if you know anything about Iron Man, he probably knows all his unique ways from the, to go transform over his body. Well, here it crumpled up and he could have a bullet. <laughs> I guess it's very thin iron. Everything, thanks to my nod to microscopic tr transistors, can be in a hole and elongated to many times its original scaring size. And so, in a minute, a second, Tony is able to don the costume of Iron Man. Exactly one minute later. Wait, Iron Man is here. He'll take care of the rampaging animals. Oh, how, how dreadful looking is he? Ugh, he looks like a creature in one of those science fiction films. Mama, mama, <laughs> save me from the ugly man. Daddy, please don't let him come near me. Great sky, I never noticed it before. My parents terrified women and children as if I were a monster. Why did I realize it before? In this drab iron costume, I'm frightening sights of the very people I want to aid and protect. They'll know I'll, I'll fight their enemies, yet they instantly shrink away from me. I must remember to alter my costume so I look like a walking nightmare. Hmm, that leopard's coil is a spring. I'll just substitute myself for the cat's intended target. Next moment, uh oh, there's some of his friends, so I'll take the cabbie by the tail and. Use him to keep the others at bay. Next moment. Surrounded, this calls for one of the many attachments my metal body is equipped with. I'll just fasten these suction cups to my palms and turn my transistors to power air pressure jets. Then, as Iron Man serves upwards, now I'll land right smack in the middle of the other cats. I done it perfectly. That's right, Kins. Here I am. Leave with me. Then it's a beast claw angrily in Iron Man's body. Now, I'll twist a small rheostat. Stepping out the electrical current in my metal body, that should give it the surprise of your toopy lives. This won't injure them, but it'll take most of the fight out of them. And there's the beast flee. Great work, Iron Man. The, the man eater are scampering back to their cages. Good. But this thought experiment taught me something. I must redesign my costume. It's supposed to frighten foes, not friends. Later, in an arena corridor. We won't need the police, Tony. Iron Man handled the emergency, but I can't understand one thing. Why does he wear such a terrifying looking costume? He actually frightens people. Really, my dear? What do you think he should, should wear? Well, he battles menaces like a hero in the olden times. Speaking of modern knight in shining armor, why doesn't he wear golden medal instead of all that awful, dull gray armor? Hmm, why not indeed? Then when people see his golden armor, they won't panic. Or they'll know he has a heart of gold and an appearance to match the golden deeds. You know, Marion, I won't be surprised if Iron Man himself were to get the same idea. Finally at the bustling airport, and I'll see you next Saturday night. That is, unless you stand me up. Any girl who would, who'd stand you up, darling, would have to be a stark, raving mad. I'll take a 650 plane from Granville. You better be waiting. And I have to do Stark's laboratory. Marion's brainstorm about turning Iron Man into night shining armor is a honey. I'll cool every visible part of my costume with untarnishable gold paint. Months later, Stark surveys his handiwork. Wow, what a difference. I'm leaving to a woman to figure out an attractive appearance. The only ones who need to fear me now are my foes. The following Saturday night at the airport. That's strange. Who is on that plane? Say, pilot, uh, didn't you pick up a female passenger at 6.50 tonight in Glenville? 
Greenville? Haven't you heard, Mr. Greenville? Shut down its airport three days ago. No planes are allowed to land or leave. Gosh, I haven't seen an American paper in a week. I just got back from Africa after completing a mission for Iron Man. Tell me, oh, uh, is there anything wrong in Greenville? Who knows? There might be since the town has completely cut off itself from the rest of the world. So quickly buys a paper. The pilot wasn't getting Greenville's wall walled in, and nobody can find out who built the wall or why. It was Donald Trump. Nobody that is, except a special pal of mine, named Iron Man. Next day, outside Greenville, after Iron Man explains why he has changed the car's costume. Okay, he has to explain that. There's nothing we can do. We can do, Iron Man. The town has the legal right to put up a wall. No traffic can get in or out. We'd, bear, we'd, bear, <coughs> we'd be breaking the law if we busted in. So the state's hands are tied, eh? Well, mine aren't until I dig under that wall. Of course, he... Iron Man, you would think he would fly over there because, you know, it's a more pirate, but no, we have to continue digging. Hmm. Layer 20 feet underground. This tiny transistor power drill will soon be hearing me under the town. So what will I find there? Why have the town's people have put the wall? Why have they broken off all communication with the rest outside world? And then, to the amazement of Greenville citizens, don't be upset, folks. I'm Iron Man. What's going on? Why do you build that wall? We can't answer you. By order of Gr Gargantus, if we disobey, we die. Gargantus? He dare not be seen talking to Iron Man. He's an intruder. Attack him. Drive him out of our city. Yes, Gargantus will be pleased we get rid of Iron Man. Stop. Have you all gone mad? I'm here to help you. This crowd's frantic gets wilder. After him. Drive him away. That crowd's not normal. They know I'm not their enemy, yet they're treating me like one. I must find out who this Gargantus is. Seconds later. What's this? The townspeople are erecting a huge statue? And as Iron Man gapes in astonishment. Suddenly they're ignoring me. They're actually bowing down on the statue, but why? Galloping gears. Is that Gargantus? They're all yelling about? He resembles a prehistoric creature who existed 80,000 years ago. Then he hears her fall man. When the crowd again rises to his feet. Mighty is Gargantus. Long live Gargantus. There's Iron Man. Get him! There's more to the mist than meets the eye. This town is under some sort of spell, and one way to break a spell is by shock treatment. So, here goes. Switching a 10 10 truck is a fairly simple task for Iron Man. Hear me, people of Greenville. This is not what Iron Man thinks of Gargantus. When he even has the statue chapels. All hail Gargantus, ruler of all men. Even though the statue smacks his fist, we're still paying homage to it as if nothing happened. We're in the grip of something which is stronger than I thought. Every citizen seems to be in a different state of hypnosis. I'll bet when they erected that wall around the town, they didn't know what we were doing then either. There's only one way to learn the answer to all, all this. I must fight Gargantus. Then as Iron Man swerves through the air, even the town police are under a Gargantus spell. There's a received order to kill, and kill me, and they're obeying them blindly. Finally, Iron Man perches on, on a tall building. I'll see if I can go to Gargantus and appear in my, for my broadcast and challenge to him. The tiny public address speaker is attached to my accessory belt. Gargantus, this is Iron Man. Gargantus, this is Iron Man. Gargantus, this is Iron Man. I challenge you to show yourself or be branded a coward before the people of Glen Granville. And then, as Iron Man's strident voice echoes through the town, two muddy gigantic hands bend a supple flagpole back, back, back until. Wow, that's him now coming at me. He is an evangelical old man, bigger and broader than any emperor pilot has ever described him. No wonder those townspeople were mesmerized. His enormous eyes were like mirrors reflecting the sun. Now he's trying to hypnotize me too. As Iron Man turns his gaze skyward, wait a minute, there's no sun to reflect the dark clouds. The dark clouds been hanging over the town ever since I arrived. This flag could tell me what I want to know. That thought is ripping, ripping, rip, rippling in the fat breeze. Okay, your hands, let's play follow the leader. I'll gl glide down the street. I'll avoid crushing any pavement by reversing the transistor's air pressure jet to my palm suction cups. Wow, that was a lot. There's Marion, the girl I had a date with. Man, mass and ties too. And here comes Gargantus climbing down the side of the building like a nimble gorilla. I'll stay out of his reach for a while. And so, you're furious, eh, Gargantus, because it's showdown time. If you can get, can't, if you can't get rid of me, you can, you can keep mass and size of population from doing anything you command. Golly, that statue looks like a Marvel Western character.
I'm not sure which one. But that might be a reference. Who knows? You can order them to build that wall around town, pass laws to keep the state and federal government out, make some people turn into a savage mob, while there's like a man to bow down to your statue built to glorify your power. Well, these three top hat transistors inserted into the three magnets will destroy all your plans. Due to nine, I'm throwing either side of you is behind you. Now has the tracking power multiplied by a thousandfold. You can't move any longer, and you're beginning to feel the trouble of this irresistible tug of the magnets, each of which pulling your body in different directions. Suddenly, yes, your dance is here falling apart like a, a huge robot that you are. Your huge motors and gears will soon litter the streets. And then as the giant robot is shattered, the strange paralysis fades from the town. <laughs> what happened? What's all this junk? The electrical remains of a robot named Andrew, a man named Gargantus. Look, Skyward, where, where my searchlight is probing. It's aliens, apparently. A powerful beam can penetrate the fake cloud to reveal what lying inside a flying saucer from outer space. I remember that dark cloud. It slowly passed from, over from the town. And for right now, Gargantus appeared. He dropped out of the skies with enormous glossy eyes, staring at those who looked upward. I am Gargantus, the mighty one. I have come to roll. First, then the world, hearken to my first order, build a wall around town. Well, I knew it was no ordinary cloud when I knew it was not beam for it, powered from a mechanism inside Gargantus. The dark cloud that blocked out the sunlight that could be reflected from Gargantus' eyes. Also, protecting the wind with a flag I realized that the cloud had remained in a stationary position for the moment I entered Glenville, therefore it was not a dark cloud or it would have drifted from the wind. Wow, it's a, it's a loud mouthful. Iron Man has a loud mouthful. He's a mouthful of a character to speak for. Alright. Quick, startle engines! The intruder is tossing the objects of rips your gang apart at us! We'll explode, too, unless I've gotten beyond their range! Bah! We must report to our planet that our visit here was a failure. This planet has changed since our initials explored it 80,000 years ago. It's no longer peopled by creatures like Gargantus. We could control the, the ordinary inhabitants through mass hypnosis, but they all also have those iron men to protect them. But you'll have rust to conquer, so our vessels must return, at least we'd be destroyed. There goes the saucer, let's hope they've been frying off for good. Is this funny how many aliens invade Earth? It's actually really funny, like how many places want to conquer it. They will come on a visit and be nice. It's like, possibly they were kind of like that. He's kind of a nuisance, but he wasn't like a jackass about it. I guess he kind of was, but... He wasn't trying to evade it, he was just trying to have a good vacation. So this would be the only alien that was decent, I guess. And that's not saying a lot. Every other alien wants to conquer Earth. <laughs> the only ones are really... I, the only race we brought up that want to conquer Earth are mostly uh, Skrulls. I think the Kree a little bit, not as much Skrulls. Anyway, then when the saucer was gone, and the very next day... You may enter now, gentlemen. Things are normal in Glenville, Rainville again. I keep wanting Glenville, I don't know why. You bet, thanks to the Iron Man. And the very next day, forgive me for setting you up yesterday, Tony, but I think there's a thing happening in Greenville. Did you read about the papers? Uh, no, I didn't have the time. I was rather busy myself yesterday. I sure was. I bet nobody ever worked so hard to find out what happened to his date. The end. That was that issue, and it was good. Not the best, but you know. Nice artwork. Had a nicely consistent story. Stanley's writing so much better than his brothers. Uh... I don't know what we're doing next time, but I'll see you then. Bye-bye.